Now, back to the Middle East, where violence is ramping up. Israel's prime minister says he's prepared to escalate attacks on Gaza. And France is sending their foreign minister to help broker a ceasefire deal, while Egypt is standing up for Gaza. Uh, joining me now on the phone from Houston, Texas, is a former U.S. ambassador to Israel and Syria, uh, Edward Jejeri, uh, Jejerian, rather, uh, Ambassador, Britain's former prime minister, or the prime minister currently, secretary, uh, former, let's try that again, the foreign secretary, an Israeli ground invasion of Gaza uh, would cost Israel a lot of international support. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do, because in 2008-2009, uh, Israel uh, conducted a ground invasion of Gaza. Uh, there were many, many casualties, over 1,400 on the Palestinian side, I believe 300 on, on the Israeli side. It was a, uh, a major military uh, movement that uh, was very uh, disruptive to uh, the stability of the region. And uh, basically the end result was that Israel conducts these uh, operations very necessarily to protect its uh, populations, especially in the south of Israel, from rocket attacks from uh, Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad. And, uh, but at the end of the day, as someone said, it is just mowing the grass every time it goes in and then goes out. Because in the interim, uh, the Hamas and these other groups rebuild their rocket arsenals. And then after a hiatus of a year or two, we're back at the same place as we're seeing today. We saw something, so, uh, we saw something like this, and I hate to interrupt. We saw something like this a few years ago, back in 2008, beginning of 2009. The difference then was that Mubarak was in control in Egypt. And we knew where Mubarak stood. The question now is, where does Mohammed Mubarak? And, and how important of a role does he play in ending this before it gets too far? I think uh, President Morsi of Egypt plays a, a, a critical role. Uh, he and his uh, government are, as we speak, uh, trying to broker a ceasefire. Uh, he is being uh, aided and supported in these efforts by important Arab players, such as the Prime Minister of Turkey, the Crown Prince of Qatar in Cairo, uh, even the Tunisian foreign minister has visited Gaza. And this is a Muslim Brotherhood uh, 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 president who has very close ties to Hamas, and therefore he is a valid interlocutor. Uh, I don't believe uh, Egypt or any of these countries obviously want to see a ground war or a uh, expansion of this conflict because it will destabilize an already destabilized region, especially given what's happening in Syria. Ambassador, let's talk about uh, Israeli politics. As former ambassador to Israel, uh, you know uh, the political system there well. We just finished our election. Um, there's an election coming up in January. How much of this could possibly be uh, the prime minister showing the strength uh, of his administration as he uh, stands there at the border? I think there's an element of that. Uh, I think the first cause, of course, is the uh, fact that uh, these uh, rockets, especially the Al Fajr rockets, uh, that have a range of about 45 to 46 miles and that can uh, come close to even Tel Aviv, uh, that uh, that is the immediate uh, uh, catalyst for this operation. But there's no doubt that Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, sees some political utility in showing a hard line to protect uh, Israel's uh, national security interests, uh, and uh, especially since he has been advocating military action against Iran uh, for a long time now. And that doesn't seem to be immediately on the horizon. Uh, this sort of is his uh, credentials as a, uh, a strong defender of Israel's uh, population. Ambassador Edward Jerry and also uh, the director for the Baker Institute at Rice University, former ambassador to Israel, former ambassador to Syria, thank you very much for uh, your thoughts this morning.